high school is like Chick-fil-A. And if you want a burger, you're in the wrong place for four years. And it's just the same thing. College is like a buff- Las Vegas buffet. It's everything you can imagine. But the difference between Chick-fil-A and that buffet is that they will bring the food to me. But at a Las Vegas buffet, you have to get it yourself. College is the buffet you eat off of the rest of your life. And you get to decide what to fill that plate with. And I suggest you try a lot of things and then go from there. But if you think that we're going to bring the food to you, you're in the wrong place. ADHD Rewired, episode 72. This is the show designed to help those of us who have really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and consultant. We know that starting can be the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me thank our sponsors. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired for your free audiobook download. This podcast is brought to you by ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Groups. To find out about the next ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group, go to coachingrewired.com. That's coachingrewired.com. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. I am glad to welcome back to the virtual ADHD Rewired Studios as a returning guest, Ryan McRae. Ryan is the creator and founder of the ADHDnerd.com. I love that name. A place <laughs> dedicated to helping people find their superpowers contained in their ADHD. He has written numerous books, spoken at many conferences, and he loves to write, read, and drink coffee. He is a tech lover, probably a bigger tech lover than I am, and a swing dancer. This I did not know. He can be reached at the ADHD nerd at gmail.com. He also has a one page ADHD study tip sheet that you can find at the ADHD nerd.com slash rewired. And by the time this airs, I hope that 404 error that I got when you sent me that to me is going to uh, be fixed. <laughs> oh, this guy just got called out. That's okay. I'm so. Doing it. On my to do list. When when you use the term, all right, nerds, that's a term of endearment from from you. It is. It is. <laughs> so it welcome is. back to the show. Thanks, thanks, Eric. I'm glad to be here. You, uh, Ryan, was on episode 45. He talked about the uh, that the four year olds that are in his head that you know sometimes don't always cooperate, and all other things related to. We talked about Evernote and Ift, which is now if. Um, and uh, yeah, so go check that episode out. But but stick around for here. You can you can go listen to that one later. How are you? I'm really great. I'm really great. And the reason I wanted you to come back on the show, um, besides because that I realized, man, that's going to be a lot less effort since I just saw you to to find other guests. Uh, so you know, part of it is the uh, the the minimally um, you know, how much effort is involved, but more importantly, it's really the, you spoke at my chat group uh, and you yeah. gave a great presentation on uh, on college, and I, I thought for sure I got to have you come back on to talk just about that. And you did talk a little yeah. bit about it uh, on on episode forty five, but let's. Let's go in deep here because you had some oh, yeah. great well, tips and you're a great presenter. I mean, you, you're a well, storyteller you. and I, I love you. it. It was engaging. Thank you. Um, so wh- where do you want to begin? Well, um, just to let it, just let your audience know, I was a resident director for nine years. And so um, I would I lived in the resident halls with students for for nine long years, um, 365. And I also had the opportunity to teach on my campus. So I was an instructor. I taught like freshman seminar, how to get good grades, how not to ruin their lives, um, study skills, financial skills. Um, I was kind of like presented the toolbox for college success. And what I found is um, I I would give this speech at the beginning of my class. I said, if you're failing intro to college, 
you might need to check your life and the decisions you've made because you're looking at four years. It's kind of like if it's a doctor and you're like, oh, anatomy, who cares? Like that might be an issue. <laughs> so, um, and, and as that went on, I would see students either with ADHD, either just like skyrocket to success and just blow people away. Or they would just get stuck in the mire of their own ADHD. And um, I was very upfront with my students that I'm ADHD. I said, look, like, you've got to keep up. Like, I will go fast. I'm at fifth gear. If you need to ratchet it down, just raise your hand. I'll talk slower. But I just go on blast. And my students loved it. They were like, just, okay, great. You know, they didn't, um, they could keep up. And so I said, you know what? I usually have a cell phone rule here, but... I go so fast, like you won't need it. And if you dare look at your phone, you're going to miss something. So, and they're like, okay, yeah. by the third week they got it. So, yeah. So what were some of the, the, like, what are some of the most common things that you see uh, for college students with ADHD who, um, let's start with the ones that, that you see who are struggling. Um, what are some of the common things? Right. So um, the struggle, the, the ADHD students that struggle um, it's because high school is just a land of structure. The bell rings, teachers remind you of your classes. Um, Classes are 50 minutes, usually, you know, 50, 55 minutes, you have five minutes to get to class. So there's structure, physical ed is in the class. So you hit the gym regardless. So a lot of our life management is put into, into high school. They tell you when to eat, the whole thing. There's a system. Mm -hmm. In college, that system is the co- that system's gone. The system's gone. The bell does not ring. You set your own schedule. They don't tell you when to eat. You're away from parents who might say, "Hey, like, why aren't you studying?" Like, it's all gone, and that's a big shock. That is, you go from a structure of like nine or ten to one to zero. Mm-hmm. It's, it's over. Mm-hmm. And so I would watch these ADHD students just flounder because they're like. Hey, no one's reminding me. And, and in my first class, I would make my students like wave goodbye to high school. They'd have to like raise their hand and be like, I want to say the count of three, say bye high school. And they're like, who's this guy? I'm like, they're like, bye high school. And I said, you've got to remember that there. You said goodbye. Like it's not there. And yeah. So, so that structureless is just life is just killer for us ADHDers. You know, one of the things that really struck me um, when you, you presented uh, last week at our chat group was it wasn't even, I mean, you have lots of great tips and strategies. Some of them I thought were great. Some of them I thought wouldn't work for me. Um, sure, sure. But one of the things that I think was really uh, clear was how important mindset is. And yeah. that for you is, is it's such a clear thing that so much of what you're doing is driven by mindset. Um, you know, I think when you were talking about the, the uh, how you set up Google Calendar and the alarms, the, the notifications, you know, a lot of people with ADHD struggle with ignoring the alarms and notifications. And when you were talking about it, you had this like d- this determined mindset about it. Will we talk a little bit about that? Sure. So what I would teach my students, regardless of if they're ADHD or not, I would teach them that you need to automate how you do your reminders and do your calendar. So I teach them, like you said, put everything in Google Calendar, set reminders. If you have a turn, and we'll talk more about this, but and how you would set that up. Mm-hmm. But I would tell students, I said, you know, um, I would if if I was driving a car and in my license it says needs glasses, it just does. I have corrective vision. Mm-hmm. You're going from driving a car to flying a plane. You need your glasses Mm -hmm. because you're going to have so much more. And so I told my students, I said, if you automate this, you will have more fun and less management. And 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 I would have students, I would say, who believes me? And, you know, and who doesn't? I said, you don't have to follow this, but I'm going to check with you guys in October. Mm -hmm. And I had to have students say, oh, I had a reminder that this paper was due and the, and the professor didn't say anything. And it's just two pages, but it's 50 points. And it reminded me five days before and I got it done. And I had this really great control group. I'm like, how are you doing, Billy? And Billy's like, I'm screwing it up. And I'm like, <laughs> well, let's look at your Google. Like, let's set up these things. 
And so I do it as a way of motivation of, I'm not trying to add meaningless structure to your life. I'm trying to set up, you know, an artificial intelligence mm. that tells you how to succeed. Like, right. And I would tell students, I said, I'm from the future. I've arrived here to help you because your 35 year old self is terrible. And I've <laughs> been sent on this mission to teach you at 18 how to succeed. And they laugh, but I would continue that three months. I'm from the future. Like I'm from, and, and my tech skills would show. I'm like, oh, my tech skills, clearly I'm from the future. Like, you know. And one of the things so, that you were saying too, that I forgot what the age cutoff you said, but there's a certain age group that you said does not know how to use the internet. Which yeah, I, so, talk about that. Cause I thought that was, it was a really interesting, the, the uh, way you described it, it was like, what? <laughs> They're born with knowing how to use this, right. but go ahead. Yeah. So millennial students, um, and I will, I will get into the boxing ring with gloves on this fight. <laughs> Millennial students, we have Gen X, Gen Y, baby boomers. We have this perception that millennials work the internet way well. And I was like, that is a fallacy. And here's why that's a fallacy. They can find entertainment and they can find information, but they can find donut on how to execute uh, with their life skills in the internet. They can find the best cat videos, but what they can't do is when I say, hey, what are some financial things on the internet to help you budget your money? What? What are you talking about? I'm like, well, there's mint.com. There's, there's these things. And they're like, what? Or I would show them if this, then that, or you know, which is called if now. I would show them in the phone that's in their pocket that it can remind them when they leave their dorm room to call their parents. Mm -hmm. They're like, I didn't know that. I'm like, it's in your pocket. <laughs> like there, it, it's location based reminders, right? Location based reminders. And they're just like, what? And you were showing them things on now talk about the, how you're helping them with, with cal like the doing online calendaring and, and the disadvantages of the paper calendar. Uh, Cause I think your, your points were really poignant about like you turn the page and you're like, Oh, that's this week. Right. So what I would tell students is, is like, let's, and I'm not against paper. If paper works for you, Eric, you know me, like, hey, whatever works. We just kind of throw it out there. Right. Here's the buffet of tips, what you like, right. fill your plate. Exactly. If you don't like it, move on. What I would tell students is there's a disadvantage to paper schedulers because they don't remind you and they do not value the appointment. So let me, so let's say you have a term paper and it's due May 2nd. And on your paper calendar, you write on May 2nd. Term paper due. And let me just but extract to April. Let me just extract real quick too. So it could be also a project for work, a deadline. Okay. Go ahead. Project for work, project deadline, a wedding you're going to, a wedding you're in, your wedding. <laughs> um, you're gonna have, you're gonna have like it's due May second. I, I can't tell you how many but people I've talked to who who have ADHD who were late for their own wedding. And it's sad, but it's oh, like, oh, I have been in those weddings. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't know they had ADHD then. It's like, oh, clearly I they now, did. I now pronounce you ADHD. Right. <laughs> so um, so that, that's due May 2nd. Yes. And so if they're only looking at their April calendar, it's filled with dates and times and projects and meetings and clubs and whatever it is. Then they turn the page to May 2nd. And that term paper is due. And they're done because they turn that page on May 1st. So they don't see their now, now they could flip back and forth, but it doesn't become like a frontal lobe assignment for them to get done. It doesn't become this, hey, I need to start this out three weeks. Mm -hmm. So what I would teach my students to do is you would put down every major assignment and then backlog it one week back. Reminder, term paper due in a week. Reminder, term paper due in two weeks three weeks. So that chime would go off. Now, when, when you're helping your, your students uh, with this, did you, cause when I, when I do things like that, I will uh, name the actual event mm -hmm. that includes what, like how many days or weeks that this thing yeah. is due. So it's not just this reminder that goes off, but it's the, you know, paper is due in three weeks. Right. So English paper, paper due in three weeks to Dr. Johnson and you have to get the, I, I would tell my students, whatever detailed reminder you want to give yourself to the future version of yourself, 
fire it up. Your future version ver- will thank you for saying and, and for saying that. And then I would say any minor tests that involve that project, library, research, interviews, whatever it is, put those in there as well. They're like, so I have 14 reminders for this one project. Yes. Yes, you do. I would rather you remind yourself more and stay on task. And then as you develop, you can reduce that. But let's just go with as let's break this down into micro tasks to build a major project. And the students started to get it. Mm-hmm. And they would, I mean, and, it, and the front load work, and I'm going to tell you the front load work on it is a little bit, is a, can be tedious. They're literally going through their syllabi and pouring in everything. But I said, look, man, just put on some music, get some Cheetos, get to work. And then you're going to be so thankful when that reminder comes in October that you have office hours due to your professor by this time, and then you get it done. I said, don't, this is a terrible reminder service. Your brain, terrible, terrible. <laughs> you've got to, you've got to offset that. This right. is your version of glasses. Terrible. Right. You know, it's one, it, I, I talk about the, the lies that we, we tell ourselves and then oh. the, the number oh. one is I'll remember that. Right. Like, oh. if, if you have that thought, right. A flag should go up. And I still will have that thought, but I, but I know my red flag thoughts, you know, it's, right. I, I kind of just laugh when I have that thought, like, <laughs> no, no, I won't like right. today's, today's uh, interview time. So in my right. head, you were at 10 o'clock, but you were yeah. actually at 11 o'clock. My coaching group was at 10 o'clock. Right. So we're getting started. And you're saying to me, oh, I'm glad I was in front of my computer because, you know, I was thinking it was at, it was at 11 o'clock. And so instead of going, oh, that's silly. Why, why, why would you think that? My my flag went up. I said, "Let me double check." And the, what I did is I double checked, and then immediately said, "Gotta go," because I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that happens. I mean, um, and it does happen. The best was I tell students, I'm like, some stuff stuff will slip through the cracks, mm-hmm. but as long as you know how to catch it. I said, but what happens is in November, December. I have students come in and they've shipwrecked it, mm-hmm. and they've hidden it, and they they're like, "How do I?" You know, and I have to kind of do triage. Mm -hmm. Say, how many classes can you pass? Here are the office hours. Mm -hmm. Go be humble. Mm -hmm. Um, And but I said, you know, I said your your professors do not sweat passing or failing you. You have to. They don't care. Right? They don't. They don't. They don't don't care. Like they've got twenty other students who are succeeding, and of course that should be, you know, their effort should be towards that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Like. And they're like, yeah, I said, not that, not that you're bad. You're not bad. But I said, if this was a date and you kept not showing up, of course, they're going to dump you. Like, you're <laughs> like, of course, like, doesn't that make like, oh, they're like, yeah, that makes sense. So because they have this high school mentality mm-hmm. that, so, that needs to be stripped away quickly. Let's talk about office hours. Oh, oh, let's talk about office hours. So you, uh, you, you encourage uh, students to, uh, to make sure you're going to your, your professor's office hours um, yes. and, and, and scheduling those. Um, you know, what, what I encourage uh, my clients to do is when they get their syllabus, I encourage them to actually only look at their syllabus one time. Yeah. Extract everything out of it from the beginning of the semester, including office hour time. So mm-hmm. go in the calendar. Yep. Okay, so what? Tell me what you, what do you tell your students about office hours? So I like your point. Yeah, and I do tell my students put the office hours just like a class, so that you you can you can have that information all at once. Um, so what I tell students is what I tell students is that professors instructors have office hours. It is an open door policy for you to come in and get assistance for you to come in and have a conversation. And so it is, and I would, I would do assignments with my students where they would go and interview their professor um, during their office hours. And it'd be like four or five questions. What do you love about your field? What's your favorite class to teach? What's your favorite lesson in that class to teach? Um, how long have you been at the university? What, and what would you tell a freshman for, to garner success? Simple. Mm-hmm. And then they would write a one to two page summary. And occasionally I would check with that professor. Hey, did they come by? 
you know, I do a little follow up, not huge. I didn't want to micromanage my students. Um, but they would find um, the success in those papers is found when they say, you know, we just had a conversation. You know what? I didn't get all the questions answered. You know what? We got interrupted by a student who needed help. Um, but they would learn that to talk to talk to their professors, to get to know them throughout the semester, they would find much more success. Mm -hmm. Because when they're thinking like, oh, what does this professor want on a test? Oh, I'm scared to talk to the professor about this. Or, you know what? I don't want to ask this question because I don't want to look, I don't want to look stupid. Like I'm that's not a, paying attention. That's a big one. And it's such a, it's, it's such a, a cognitive distortion. It's, you know, the, the fears of looking stupid. It's like, no, it's, I mean, if we ask students, um, you know, how many think it would take, it takes courage to go ask for help and, and say that you struggle with something, you know, it's most students are going to raise their hand, you know, if, yeah, yeah. if, uh, but who's willing to do it, you know, it's, it's cause they were afraid of looking dumb and it's like, it's right. Right. Oh, it's, it's brutal. And, and to me, I think it looks more dumb to know that you need the extra help and, and not get it because you're afraid of what your professor right. is going to think. And you're paying thousands of dollars for your tuition and you're afraid to look dumb. Yeah. I, I tell students you're leaving money on the table, right? If I'm like, you're not doing that because the the back row of the seat uh, of the the your lecture hall or classroom and the front row of the seat they cost the same. Front row is way better. Yeah, I would tell if you can even. And they're like, oh, the front row. I'm like, how about the third? Like, everyone, <laughs> calm down. Like, how about the third in the center? And I said, and if you sit by the window. You are a rookie. That's how I <laughs> And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you think I mean? And they're like, um, they're like, I'm like, unless it's a brick wall, I go, and I can find entertaining things about that too. So like stay away, you know, like stay focused on that. Um yeah. So And you know, the the so much of, of what we do in life is based on the relationships that we develop. And oh. so and one of the the and and you when I mean, we talked about this and you talked about this in your presentation was the developing the relationships with those professors. Cause yeah, your grades are based on a rubric, but who do you think gives the final grade? Not a rubric, right. a person. Right. And I, I have had more than my share of A's that should have been B's B's that should have been C's and C's that should have been D's because uh -huh. I went for office hours a lot. Oh yeah. Um, I was taking a class at Illinois State University. Um, it was children's literature. And I was like, I'm going to smoke this class. Like, read kid books, write a one-page summary. I do not like green eggs and hams. Right. Sam, I, I, am. Like, I got this. <laughs> this, teacher, this teacher smoked me. I was an English major and an, edu and an education major, like meeting of the two worlds. And I was getting C's. And I would walk home reading, like, I would do a little thing on, like, where the wild things are. And she would write the C and, like, show me all the mistakes and the questions. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is unreal. So I went to her office hours, went to her office hours. I'm like, can you take a look at this? Can you give me some pointers? Not, like, grade it now, but what would you want to see? And then she did. And then I would do it again. And then the corrections, I was getting A's because I didn't have to guess. I was coming to her. I then took, I took her for an independent study um, that she accepted me for. And then she helped me write, you know, something for my, for getting my master's. And she pointed me in the right direction to get published. And like that. And I, I bet you were going to, to show her those drafts of your assignments to those papers. Now she's invested because she's interested there's, in a sense, there's ego involved in it for her because she wants right. to see how, how you're taking her feedback. Right. And we developed this relationship and she's like, you know, like, what are your favorite children's books? And, and I'm like, well, what are yours? And so I introduced her to things. She introduced me to things. We had this common, this common interest. And, mm -hmm. and I still see her to this day. And, you know, I can, I can literally write her and say, how are things? What do you, you know? And yeah. And that was 20 years ago. Wow. So that's, that's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just the, the importance of those relationships. And I think too, having the, uh, to me, I think that college is a great practice field for real life with self-advocacy. Because you know, and here's the thing: I think that in college, it's a much safer place to to tell your professors that you have ADHD, um, but you but don't expect them to know what to do about it. Like you have to tell right. them that too, you know. So uh, and that's one of the big differences between high school and, and college. Is high school, you know, they're gonna give if you have an IEP or 504, they make all those accommodations for you, and it kills me when I hear that there's students that don't even know what's in their IEP or that they don't 
don't even know what an IEP is, and they've had one their entire student career. Right. Um, but in as you after you graduate from from college, and you get into the work world, I, you know, I, I actually discourage people from disclosing their their ADHD. But what I do yeah. encourage people is to share with your boss what's going to help you be successful, because that's going right. to help them be successful. Uh, so by having those conversations, college is a really safe place to practice that because you're paying tuition and there is right. a safety net to that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, and I tell my students like, Hey, you can share like, Hey, I really want to pay attention or I really struggle with it. Or, you know, I had one student, um, he's ADHD and he, uh, he could knit. And that was like his like motor skills on like knitting and doing that. And, mm -hmm. uh, he'd let his professor know like, um, hey, I uh, I just knit. I'm paying attention, and he just as long as he was involved in discussion, the professor was fine with it. And that's that's a great great point because if if you ha some people need to be moving to 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 pay attention, um, some people think they need to be moving but can't pay attention when they're doing other things. Right. And you know I think so. It's it's expected. You know that that you know from a social standpoint. Paying attention looks like our eyes and body are facing, you know, whoever's talking, facing the group. If we are doing something that's different than that, but that's what we need to do to pay attention, we right. need to we need to let that be known to the group. Otherwise, people are going to just think we're rude and disinterested. Right. I'm planning ahead. And you can too. This fall's ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group begins September 14th, 2015. Besides from the benefit of securing your spot, I've set it up so you can start making payments now and you could spread the cost over six months, making it affordable on almost any budget. To take advantage of this six-month payment option, you do have to sign up by July 31st. Then you could pay over five months, then four months. The price will go up September 1st, and we already had one person sign up, which is pretty awesome. Many of you were interested in this summer's session, but told me you needed to wait until the fall. If you already know now that you want to join the next session, don't wait. Go now to coachingrewired.com to schedule your free consultation. That's coachingrewired.com and prepare to get your ADHD rewired. Today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30 day free trial. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD rewired. Check show notes for link. One of the, the uh, analogies that I really liked when we were, you know, we were talking about the differences between high school and college um, was the buffet analogy. Okay. Well, yeah. well, tell us about that. Cause that's, that's great. I, I, like I that? can share that with, can, a, with a client like the next day. I just thought that was great. You can use that one. That one's free. That one's free. Now I do have to um, tell you though, I'll go first tell your story. Go ahead. Um, so I, uh, so high school, is like is like chick-fil-a and if you want a burger you're in the wrong place for four years and it's just the same thing it's the same classes it's the same students it's the same curriculum it's, it's just the same college is like a buff las vegas buffet it's everything you can imagine in my first year i joined a circus at my school they had a circus i was a clown I was a clown circus there. This is and not a metaphor either. There, this is not a metaphor. I was a serious clown. So we we can um, – college just has clubs and organizations and majors, things high school just does not offer. Mm -hmm. But the difference between Chick-fil-A and that buffet is that when I order a Chick-fil-A, whether it's in the drive through at the counter, they will bring the food to me. They'll bring it to me. And then I, if I don't like it, I eat it. And if I like it, I eat it. It's just a thing. But at a Las Vegas buffet, you sit down, they hand you a plate, maybe, and you have to get it yourself. And a lot of people, a lot of my college students, I'll say, you know, college is the buffet you eat off of the rest of your life. And you get to decide what to fill that plate with. You get to decide. I said, and I suggest you try a lot of things and then go from there. But if you think that we're going to bring the food to you and entertain you and make sure you get good grades and all that, you, you are in the wrong 
you're in the wrong place and you need to figure out a place where that exists, but it's not here. It's not here. So, I mean, I had the terrible part of my job was I would meet with students and, um, they had broken enough of my residential housing um, policies that I would need to, that they would need to be evicted for the betterment of the community. So they were high level things were happening and they would be evicted. And I would tell, and I would, I would have an empty plate in my, in my desk drawer. And I said, you know, this, this is empty. This is empty because in all my evictions over nine years, I would ask students this key question, what club, organization or government are you involved in on campus and a hundred percent of them said none Hmm. because whenever i see a student not involved on campus they will be involved with something else like so like drugs alcohol vandalism Mm -hmm. and more and more and more serious things Mm -hmm. so i would have to meet with those students to be like they're like well you know i'm just i'm just struggling i'm like well you know, and I, and I would, I would show them, I would walk them through the buffet and say, these are all the things offered. Here are every poster that I've ever made on campus. Here's every, I said, you know, I'm sorry, you know, so you're gonna have to find something else, but I hope for whatever the next buffet you go to that you fill your plate. Cause right now this is what you have. So, um, you know, we can change our minds at the buffet. We can try some things, and and if we don't like it, we don't have to eat it. We go back for something yeah. else. One of the uh, one of the things I oft, uh, often see um, students struggle with is the the changing of majors. Okay, um, talk a little bit about how you talk with with how do you talk with students about that? Like, when is it? You know, when is the time to change majors? When? You know, is it just as a class that's hard? Like, how do you help people kind of figure that out? Sure. Changing majors is hard. Now, freshman, sophomore year, you have usually some, there's some trajectory change that's easy because you're kind of getting your your common classes out, your mm-hmm. English major, your language requirement, your anthropology course. And then your junior and senior year, you get into your major. Mm-hmm. So what I try to do with college freshmen and sophomores is when they're in my class for college success, I'll say, I want you to find a podcast, there you go, about your major that you like. Business, English, whatever it is. And I say you have a week, and I would show them how to find podcasts, like it's not difficult. And then the students that struggle to find one, I said, that's a red flag for you. Because you have found you have not found interest outside interest in your major. It's a great like. idea. I love it. And they were like, "But, but my parents." I'm like, "And there it is." It's <laughs> like, because um, you know, like I enjoyed my English major stuff much more than my special education. Mm-hmm. I've been a writer for 22 years. I was a teacher for seven. Mm-hmm. Like it's writings on the wall, or what I tell students are like. They're like, I hate my major. I'm like, well, what class do you love? And so they'd be like, well, in my business major, I took out a marketing class and I love that. But that's a that's in the communications field. I said, okay, just meet with your advisor and see what can move over and see how you'd make that up. Mm-hmm. But you've got to find something you and I people are like, oh, you know, I don't necessarily love it, but I really like it. I'm like, fine like it like it will grow as you learn more about that industry Mm -hmm. but if you can't find anything outside your major that you like that you would actually listen to in your free time you gotta go right and i think that's that's one of the things with with adhd and any learning difference you have to love what you do or as you say like what you do in and then hopefully it grows into a love. Right. But if you don't like it at all, like you're going to struggle. You're, you are not going to do well. Um, so, you know, whether you're a parent and your kid is going to college or you're listening to this as a, a, a co- you know, to be college student, um, if you don't love what you're about to do, you are not in the right place. And, you know, if, you know, because the ADHD brain can light up and do amazing things when when you love it when you're passionate about it when you just 
one of the you know when I talk to people about your about their, their strengths and and their gifts, you know, a lot of, of people I talk to like they, they don't know, and I ask them, what are the things that come easy to you? That people maybe make comments about, like, wow, that's really awesome. Like, yeah. there's this weird thing that happens that people think that work has to be hard, right? <laughs> And our and our TV is a big like theme. If you watch like any sitcom, like everybody hates their job, or you know most people do. Um, one of the things that got me out of that rut was taking the Strengths Finder um, mm-hmm. test from Gallup, mm-hmm. and it gives you your top five strengths. It's an assessment, and then focusing on playing those top five strengths because as ADHDers will do, we'll be like, "Well, what's my weakness? Let me spend eighty percent of my time." Oh. And I'm like, "I'm like, no, that's like, the wrong percentage." Flip I'm that. like. I'm like, why, why are you asking the rabbit to climb? Like, don't rabbits want to run, like run. So, you know, when I got my top five strengths and we can get more into that another time, I was able to be like, these are the top five things I'm good at. I'm going to do these things. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do these things. And I found my life just go like um, in amazing directions. And then the weaknesses, I would just delegate out. Like Mm -hmm. that's, you said, Ryan, what's your ADHD philosophy? Focus on your strengths, delegate your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. You know, and, I, and I think that, you know, focusing on a, per, a percentage of our time, I think is good to, to dedicate to personal development. And that includes oh, getting better at the things that, that are challenging for you. Sure. And there are certain things that you can, you can get it and get better at it. And, it, but it takes so much mental effort that, the delegation is, is, you know, if you can, is yeah. the best step uh, to, yeah. to do. I mean, I, that's, that's why I have a, a billing service that I use. I mean, it's like that kind of stuff that it, it doesn't take me that long to do if I were to do it, but the keywords mean if I were to right. do it and yeah. I put it off and I hate it and it's boring and my brain just goes, Oh, make it stop. Yeah. And yeah, I, <laughs> it, with college students, I'll tell them they're like, I really struggle studying at eight o'clock at night. I'm like, well, why? Yeah, talk about talk about that. Well, so my college students, because they're in their high school mode, are like, well, you can only study from when you get home from school on. And I'm like, no, college is different. Why? Here's why. Let's say I have a nine o'clock class, and then I've got a a a class at twelve o'clock. They happen nine o'clock class, twelve o'clock class. So I have about two hours in there of a gap. The rookies will go home to their resident hall or wherever and screw around for two hours, head back to class. Rookie move. Mm -hmm. And I would tell my students, I'm like, don't you dare do this. (laughs) So I said, if I see walking back from campus, you better be done with your classes. Because they can use those two hours to study. Mm -hmm. They can crank out two hours because our brain, our ADHD brain is is locked into a study mode. If I bring that ADHD brain from study to recreation, back to study, too much back to recreation, we, our, our willpower rapidly decreases. Yes. yes. So if I can lock in, study, you know, I'm in class, study, finish the class. I said, you don't have to go home right after that. Just study. And so I teach my students, study while you're on campus only. When you come home, when you walk home, you, are, you better be doing the end of day march. Now they're like, but I got a night class. Couldn't avoid it. I hear you, bro. I hear you. Just make sure you put in that study time. I said, this is going to sound crazy, but after your English class, you could actually study for your psychology exam. I know. So (laughs) like that's later that day, like just stay on campus. And the other thing I tell students is once the sun sets, stop studying. You're done. You've done so much for the day. Cognitively, you cannot handle that load again. You can't. It would be like doing a CrossFit workout in the morning and then in the afternoon. And you're like, hey, one more this evening. Like, no, you're done. Like, you've got to rest and recoup because you're you're gonna pay for, you're gonna pay hard for it the next day. You know, you're in I, diminishing returns. I, w- I was as you were saying that, I was just kind of thinking, what would my 20 year old self? Have uh, how would I would have responded to that advice, and I would have just probably said, "You're an idiot," because that's not how my brain works. Because I'm I'm doing two a.m., three a.m., four a.m. I might as well just stay up because I have a class at nine a.m. I cannot yeah. believe looking back what I did to my body and my brain in college. Because yeah. you know, it's, and it's after I got that diagnosis and and uh, my sophomore year, you know, my strategy was I have had Adderall and work ethic. 
I had nothing right. else, you know? So right. I would spend hours and I, I mean, nights in the library. Um, I mean, I, my social life that was in a sense was jeopardized because I on average spent 10, 15 hours a day studying because that's yeah. what it took for me to, to do well. Um, it was helpful that I became interested in what I was learning. So there, there was sure. that to it and, oh, yeah. and, and success tasted really good. And yeah. you know, after that first semester that I got a three, seven, five, and I, I never gotten grades like that before. I'm like, I want more of this. Right. And, yeah. then, and then I got more anxiety because I was ah. trying, because <laughs> yeah. I was trying to, you know, the bar was raised so high. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I ever, I may have shared this on an earlier, earlier podcast, there was a week, um, I think it was my sophomore or junior year, I was working on a, a paper that was in the education, uh, uh, it was an education paper, um, and I was I was finishing it up, I finished it up at the library, and I was going to go home and print it out, um, so I didn't want to pay for printing, whatever, and so I, I save it at the library, go home and print it out, open up the file, file corrupt, will not open. I like dart back to the library, like just going, no, 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 no. I mean, this is like a, this was a probably at the time, my like the longest paper, I think it was like a 10 page paper. And I mean, it, it is, I'm, I'm not a good writer. I mean, writing is really challenging for me. And um, it was gone. It was gone. It was, it was yeah. nowhere to be found. It was the, my disc. I emailed it to myself. That file was corrupt. I had it on a, on a floppy disk. Remember those floppy disks? Um, file oh, yeah. gone, uh, gone gone i think i was able to pull up those uh you know the the i don't even know what you call them the little rectangle squares that you see like the like, oh oh i'm uh, the worst. Yeah. worst so so one i developed the strategy of of really amazing um appeals to my teacher for more for more time um i worked from that um i think it was on a monday i worked from that monday to that friday i did not go to bed by yeah. Friday, I was hallucinating. Oh, absolutely. It was that is not a joke, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, it I, was absurd. I slept the entire weekend. My roommates had to wake me up because they thought I was dead. They yeah. woke me up on Sunday. Yeah. I mean, it was to, to think what like I was doing to my brain. I mean, it's so you're yeah. Going back, I, I wish that, and I love that analogy. And the more and more I think about that, about taking your current self and going back and talking to your younger self, yeah. man, I would, I would have smacked the crap out of myself. Yeah. What are you doing, Eric? You know, right. this is not working for you. Yeah, I remember my freshman year. Um, I I stayed on campus. I didn't go home, so I moved into like the dumpiest summer apartment. I we my me and my four roommates paid one hundred one hundred and fifty dollars total, one hundred fifty dollars for the summer. Like we each just brought out some twenties and we were done, and that was our rent. But I remember like moving in, and I crawled into bed on like a Friday at three p.m. and I just fell asleep, and I woke up on Sunday morning, and I was like. I maybe like staggered around on Saturday and just like ate cheese out of the refrigerator or something. <laughs> but I had to ask my friends. They're like, I'm like, I'm sleeping all the time. Like, oh, you're fine. That's like normal. Because I lived in the honors dorm. I had the opportunity to live in the honors dorm. And I would ask guys, I'm like, how are you guys socializing at night? I have all this study. And they're like, oh, we study during the day. You are you need to do that. And I was like, tell me more about this. And they're like, just study during the day. And then one trick I learned from them is at nine in the morning, we had a study room and it was like mm -hmm. holy ground. There would be students in there at 9 a.m. on a Saturday. And I'm like, is this a group? Is this an organization? Is this a club? They're like, no. And one guy was just, a, he's like, no, those are smart people. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, you have nothing to do on a college campus on Saturday at 9 a.m. Dead. You know, the campus you know, is dead. You have nothing to do. So they eat breakfast they study and they're done by 11 a.m. And then sure enough, at 11 a.m., the, all these nerds file out. But those are the guys I see having fun on campus at night. And so I joined that club quick. Hmm. At 9 a.m., you know, I, I would just be studying and for a couple hours. And I couldn't believe how much I got done because my ADHD was like, I'm not even up yet. Like, oh, what's going on? And I was just getting this done. And then I, you know, because my ADHD was like, I have nothing to remind you or pester you about. It is nine in the morning. I'm like, I know. So, 
Ryan, yeah. you recently got a a new toy that you were talking about would be the that would revolutionize ADHD management, and it's on your wrist. It is. It is. You got the Apple Watch. I do. Talk to me I about do. it. Um, I yes. Is, is it so, as, well? Let me ask you this: Is it as awesome as you hyped it up to be? Wow, that's such a loaded question, Eric. I know. Um, I know. I, know. Um, I here's what my watch allows me to do. Um, my watch allows it frees me from my phone. Frees me from my phone, so I can put all my reminders in here. Um, and then this watch, when I look at it, it tells me. Um, a lot of information, like how active I've been, what's my next appointment, um, how much battery life I have left, the whole thing, the temperature outside. But it, it gives me a tactic. It gives me a little tactic feedback to let me know, hey, you've um, someone sent you a text. Hey, this appointment's coming up. When I'm driving, it lets me know the direction. When I presented it, Chad, with you, I was able to run the keynote from my watch. That was pretty cool. That was pretty. That got your attention. I was like, oh. I mean, most I, of my use, I use my phone as the remote. Uh, yeah, but how's that working out? It, yeah, it works most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, a public speaker was like, "I've never used it," and then I showed him the keynote remote on here. He goes, "All right, I'm I'm sold." So uh, yeah, I'll take one of those. But uh, um, so it's it's it's, an, it's freezing from my phone because this is a rabbit hole where when I check something, when I just Your check phone my is email, a rabbit hole. yeah, when my phone is a rabbit hole, when I just check my email. And that's one of your key phrases. Like, I'll just check my right, email. Just, or exactly, exactly. So um, I can't respond to email on here on my watch. Mm -hmm. So I can, when I get a notification, maybe I, I have it set for only certain notifications for email. Like, mm -hmm. it'll only trigger when certain people. I can simply just read it, and then I'm still able to continue. I don't get lost in Facebook. I don't get mm -hmm. lost in Twitter or paper or whatever whatever app I'm using. I can simply, um, it just gives me the reminders and then I set it to the priority. So it's only mm. reminding me when it's vital. Mm -hmm. It's not a constant ping fest on my phone. <laughs> so what, um, what have been the surprising positive parts of it and maybe some unexpected kind of downsides to it? So positives, I would say um, that I adapted quick to it. it. There is a learning curve to it, but I adapted fast. And was able to just, it's very You were intuitive. also super excited about getting it. I was super excited about getting it. Um, I knew a lot about it getting into, um, before I got it, um, I understood a, a lot of its components. I, it just it just kind of freed me from from my phone. Just, just to, so I can sit out on my balcony and read. And my ADHD brain isn't like, we might forget things. And then if I, if I need something, I can simply use Siri on the on this, it clicks into, it ties into my Evernote mm -hmm. and then the reminder's done. So I'm able to just be let less have that ADHD reminder vibe going on challenges. Um, the only challenge I'd say is when I forget it, like if I go to Trader Joe's and I'm like, Oh, I forgot my watch. Like then I'm like, I'm forgetting things now. And so, um, because I, I at Trader Joe's, I'll use Apple Pay on my watch, mm -hmm. and the, people are just blown away. I'm like, yeah, if I forget my wallet, I still have my Apple Pay here. So how does that work? Uh, so I um, through on my phone, I'm able to put my credit card information. Um, it it takes that, it holds that in Apple Pay. It's secure, so Apple never sees your information. Um, it's only between you and your merchant, your bank. Mm -hmm. And then I in my watch, I allow Apple Pay to be used. I simply click twice on the side button. Apple Pay comes up. I put it against the the device. The you know, I don't know if it's a Walgreens or a Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. It sends a signal, and then the purchase is complete. Hmm. It's cool. pretty fun. It's yeah. on your it's on your phone right now. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So one less thing. All right. Uh, how's the battery life on it? Uh, lasts me all day. All day. Lasts me all day. Okay. Yeah, it, it should last about 12 hours for a constant user. And by constant user is like, you're constantly looking at your watch. You're looking at yourself up constantly. So like the first two weeks when you get it. Right, yeah, the first two weeks. <laughs> um, I like that I can I can put my phone somewhere and, and use the use the um, the watch as a shutter. Mm -hmm. So I can take pictures remotely. So it's nice. Oh, so that's you cool. So you don't have to run and like get into the picture. You can simply be with people. Oh, turn neat. Turn the shutter on. The iPhone well, camera comes on and you can just snap a picture. What, what are some of the other 
uh, cool things about it. And now I'm like, hmm, do I want to get I one know, of these? I know. It ties into Evernote um, just with voice commands. So you can just like do an audio message if you want to remember something. Um, the shutter, um, you can, if you're into Uber, you can summon an Uber driver through this. Um, I like the exercise part. So it lets me know a stand goal. You should be standing at least 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So it'll remind me when I should stand. So if I've been sitting at my computer for a long time, um, it consistently takes your heart rate. Um, so it can takes it, a lot can of it then, Can it give you, can you set it up to notify you if your heart rate is elevating to a certain point? Not yet. Because that but, would be great for helping people manage anxiety who yeah. aren't always, who aren't always aware I, of that. They're feeling anxious, but their, their physiological uh, symptoms are there. Yeah. That would be a great app for you to write, Eric. I would, uh, I would, let me I would, add that to my many projects that I uh, currently well, I, have. I, I, yeah, my, my, like my project of getting that website up for you, so there's not a 404 error. You, you only have a couple of days. Well, I, I think you, this will this will probably go out in um, the week of the fourth. I think after the yeah. fourth weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. So let's see what what else. Um, um, let's see. Yeah, I just with college students, I would just say, um, be like, one thing is just be like, just give yourself like grace and forgiveness when you screw it up. Like, it's okay. The The thing that I see college students is that they hide their mistakes well. Hmm. And that's what gets them in trouble. Like, and when it's and in keeping solid communication between the college student and the parent is really key. Because when that parents left out of the loop. Now, I will say this, like, I don't, you know, do I think parents should be checking if their kids are going to school, going to class? Like, no, like you guys have to work out a good, a healthy boundary as far as what you're going to know and what you're not going to know. Mm -hmm. And I coach college students on that. You know, I teach them when they go home for like Thanksgiving break, spend the first night with their parents, not with their friends, because those the parents missed you, missed you. And they're probably feeding you that weekend. So you want to like, hang out with them and just be like, watch a movie, whatever it is, be all there, not on your phone, texting a friend, like be all there. And then you get much more freedom the rest of the weekend. So I would teach that right before they left for a break. And then I would say, how did it go? And I would have students be like, Hey, your plan worked or I didn't follow your plan at all. And it was terrible. And I'm like, I'm right again. So, <laughs> um, you know, and, and the other, I, I, I like this tip that we talked about it at Chad is, you know, the other thing is when college students get really like, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I'll say, you know, I had an English professor. I'm like, you know, I just don't have time to read all these books. Like I've got three books in your class and three books in this class. Like, like, don't you guys get together and discuss like what books you're going to have us read? And they're like, no, like we, are you, no, it's not a thing. And uh, they're like, it's not like we're getting together and talking about what day prom should be on. And I'm like, Ah, uh, it's makes sense. So, you know, my professor told me, just bring a book with you wherever you go. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, just whatever book you're reading, uh, reading, just carry it with you all the time, everywhere you go, no matter what. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, and if you have a free moment, just read it. And I was plowing through books. I'm 42 years old. He told me that when I was 19, I, to this day, carry a book with me wherever I go. What are you reading right now? I'm reading The Martian by Andy. Um, ooh, I'll get the title, but The Martian by Andy Webb, I think it is. Ooh, if, if you're listening, Andy, I'm really sorry, but I'm really enjoying your book. Uh, <laughs> guy gets guy gets talk about ADHD. A guy who is a botanist and a mechanical engineer gets stranded on Mars, and he has to figure out a way out. And huh. it's not sci-fi at all. It's not like aliens save him. No, like it is. You know, it is pure science, and it is. Amazing, and the guy is ADHD as the day is long. Do you have any idea I, if it's on Audible? I I don't. I, it probably is. It's it's been a New York Times bestseller. So all right, so go go uh, check it out because if you uh, haven't got your free download yet, you can do that at uh, audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Let's sorry. move in to the last part of the show, which we call the random question round. Now, I think this is this, your your second go at the random question around it is available on audible andy weir I awesome just thank you thanks for doing that um so this is the part of the show that has nothing to do with adhd um i think i just screwed that up let me, let me try that again 
Okay. Th this is the Take part two. of the show. We're leaving it in now. This is the part of the show that has nothing to do with ADHD, which then paradoxically has. It still doesn't sound right. I'm just gonna keep moving forward. Okay. Okay. Um, you guys have heard this before. So, all right. You know, my whole blah, blah, blah. All right. Random question round. Question number one. Invention. You can't use the same one you already used on, on episode 45. What was the one I used on I episode I have no 45? idea. Um, man, invention. I think it was something about water. Oh, yeah. About Charity water. Bottles or... Yeah. 800 million people don't have potable water. Charitywater.org. Um, let's see. Invention. Have you invented that yet? No, no, it's one of my projects. Um, <laughs> invention. Um, it would just be a wristband with like a light that either goes red or green. And when you're on a first date, like if it's red, you have to abort. <laughs> what, what, like, what, what would the name of this this wristband be? Oh man. Um, I'm just not that into you. It's never gonna work. It's never gonna work. So that's what it's called. But hot or not dot? Hot or not, yeah. The but the dot part, because you know it's playing yeah. on the hot or not, which is which is yeah. such a meme. And that's the dot that yeah. lights up. Yeah. All right. So it saved me a lot of time. So you're an author. I am. You write books. I, I do. You've taken courses on children's books. I have. Have you ever written one? A book? A children's a book. I have one. It's in this, I know we've joked about like it's a project, but um, I actually have one I'm working on. It's kind of like the sides. Do you ever have like a side side project? Like your side project takes up all your time. And you're like, oh, I got this. And it's like my side side project. So um, I do. And it's about, it's it's fantasy and it's, it's a children's book. And it's about three little girls. And one of them um, saves a duke. One of them slays a dragon. And one of, and one of them uh, uh, defeats a hag, and they uh, they get to an academy, and what what the academy finds out, or what the girls say, is like they really didn't defeat the dragon, they really didn't defeat the hag, they really they use their brains instead of their brawn, and they're afraid to be found out. So, and then danger ensues. Okay, so I I'm, I think. You did, did, you did part? share that on, on I have done the last nothing one? with it so Okay, well. so because you've done nothing with that, what's the, what's the sequel to that book going to be called? Um, oh, man. The War Among Us. And it's about the girls. Um, they're, they're teenagers, and they're, they're helping run the academy. And danger ensues. Danger ensues. So I'm um, hoping to get that to Pixar. Okay, and, it, and since it turns into a trilogy, what's the third one? Um, <laughs> gosh, man, you are killing me. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know the legacy. Um, something about the legacy. I don't know. I don't know. My ADHD is falling. On a <laughs> usually, by the, way, <laughs> by the way, I know. Usually, um, you have to see the movie. This is a plug, and Pixar should write Eric a check. You have to see the movie Inside Out. You have to see it. Inside Out by Pixar. It's about the little girl, and then the um, they anthropomorphize her emotions. So there's like oh. joy, sadness, anger, fear, I and disgust. It. I heard about it. It is the ADHD movie from heaven. You'll just be like, it all makes sense. I there's think like, I saw a preview for that, and thinking oh, this would so be great brilliant. for the kids with autism. Oh, it's so it's so good, and it's great for parents to get like, what is my twelve year old like going through? And it just explains. You um, just had that. Speaking of emotions, you just had that like in love crush kind of look oh, when you're describing it. I just love like, it. Oh. I I might have bawled three or four times during that movie. That is that is not a yeah. Okay, what's the first movie that you cried at? Oh my gosh, um, the first movie I cried at was man. I think um, Old Yeller. I saw that at about nine years old. And I just rented it and like no one gave me like, hey, it's sad. Like, no, I was just like a boy and his dog. Who doesn't want that? And I remember just being like, what is going on? Like, and my my dad came because I was kind of a latchkey kid. My dad came home. He's like, 
oh ryan's crying like what's going on i'm like the dog like i don't want felix my dog to get rabies and then it will attack the family (laughs) my dad's like whoa like no one's getting rabies like this is not a thing anymore and so he got his rabies shot i was like oh like i was so like my adhd just like turned into like (laughs) catastrophic like dogs who walk among us are like carrying like i was just a mess so yeah it didn't shape me i still love dogs and i didn't become a veterinarian so it didn't really (laughs) shape me very much and i didn't become a farmer and i haven't shot a dog so um the movie i cried the the cried in in college was i saw of mice and men in the theater Mm -hmm. with uh gary sinise and i just bawled and the shawshank redemption bawled bawled (laughs) I was just a mess. So I, I remember, I don't, I don't remember how old I was. It was maybe probably in middle school. I remember uh, my girl. I, oh, I cried. The bees. Oh my the gosh. Bees. Oh, the bees. <laughs> and I think, I, bees. I think I even may have been on a date. Like one of my first like awkward, you know, middle school dates. Yeah. The bees. Oh that's terrible that's a terrible movie that's a terrible terrible movie so i have like three i had when i was growing i had three degrees of separation from macaulay culkin i did i did hebrew school um carpool with macaulay culkin's double at home alone oh that's crazy that is crazy you get a double at home alone yeah yeah this scene where i think he's like going down the the stairs like in the (laughs) yeah. yeah yeah Um, so anyways, um, usually when the, uh, the, the train is going nowhere is my time to, to wrap up this show. Um, is there anything else that, that I didn't ask you about or that you want to share, uh, before we wrap Uh, this up? Yeah, I would just say when you're at a cut, when, if there's ADHD college students who are hearing this or parents of, um, just make sure, you know, that students really go into it knowing about th- that there's not going to be much structure and that they realize that, um, that college students everywhere make mistakes. And just because a college student makes a mistake, it doesn't mean that they're not meant for, for college. Mm-hmm. It's just like when a, when a student, you know, when a kid falls on their skateboard and scrapes up their face, like the parent doesn't take that skateboard away and put them in a bubble. And I think parents, Ho- hopefully when they start, not anyways, hopefully not. Right. So, um, so I want, you know, like college students are going to make mistakes. They're going to scuff it up a bit, but they need to keep going. And just as long as they make that correction mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, and, and understand the allies they have on that campus, whether it's the office of disabilities, whether it's their resident advisor, whether it's their professors, like find people to connect with mm-hmm. because there's nothing worse than a student feeling alone on a college campus. There's, mm-hmm. that's, there's nothing worse. So, so having, having that go on and, you know, when you go to your preview for college, you know, your orientation day, just, you know, do that. And I could talk on and on about, um, you know, how to get along with roommates and, and, and do that part. But, uh, I, well, thank you for everything that you shared. I think uh, a couple of just uh, other things that that I think are are um, important to to share is you know I I always did except for my freshman year when I almost failed out. I always did twelve hours uh, credit hours a mm-hmm. semester. Yeah, and yeah, it took me longer to graduate. I was at my max at twelve hours. Sure, and you know my my parents that they kept wanting me to do fifteen hours, because, you know, because from a financial standpoint, it's going to be cheaper in the long run if I do fifteen hours versus twelve. I would have failed miserably if I did fifteen right. hours. There's no, there's no way I could have handled fifteen hours. So if you're if you're a parent and and your kid is is kind of in that situation. You know, just listen to what they're saying is what their their real max is. Don't push them to to overdo. I mean, if they can handle it, great. I mean, I've talked to people with ADHD who've done like twenty one credit hours, which just blows my mind. Yeah, um, they they are just carrying some more bandwidth than I have uh, in their brain. And good for them if they can do it. Um, another thing is too is that keep in mind that ADHD is a developmental 
delay in the sense that so your 18 year old that you're sending to college is really 15 from the standpoint of all those sure. organizational skills, the executive function, the time management. Uh, so, you know, a gap year is often a very good idea uh, for students. Give, give them some time to, to do some work. Um, let the brain kind of develop a little bit. Uh, and community sure. college is also a really good yeah. stepping, uh, stepping point uh, as well. Let the brain develop. Because um, yeah. how I did grad school and how I did my undergrad are two different. I mean, I was yeah. a completely different student. Um, right. So uh, just, you know. Keep it. Keep all those things in mind. Look for those accommodations. But the best accommodations, I think, are not going to be from the Office of Disability Services. They're going to be from the relationships that that your student or you have with your professor and talk to them individually yeah. in their office about what you specifically need uh, from yeah. them to be successful. Because you're going to get more accommodations from that than than anything else. I was able to redefine assignments because I geared it. I mean, was able to bend it so it was more interesting to me and things that I was interested in. You sure. can do that in college. And yeah. we know that interest makes the brain light up. So, yeah. I mean, and that's, as you talked about the, the buffet, it's like, there's lots of interesting things at the buffet. Uh, you got to go out and get it though. Yeah, you do really do. Um, thanks for, thanks for having me on your show. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to have that website up for the ADHD nerd. And give it one more time. Uh, give the website and your email one more time, sure. please. Sure. It's uh, you can find me at the ADHD nerd.com um, slash rewired. And um, my email is the ADHD nerd at gmail.com. I'd love to take some questions. If you're like, Hey, I've got this college student or this college student. I'd love to be able to help. Um, I, I think in the subject line, it should be rewire this nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this nerd. But, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, your book is it? Is it? It's launched. Is it? It is. I'm waiting for the. I. I it's on my website. The one about. Uh, I have one called Ordering the Chaos. It's, it's geared towards adults. I have one on ADHD and conquering the college campus, and you can find that on my site. And it's about to be on Kindle. So hopefully, by the time this airs, you can find it on Kindle. So and awesome. my, and just search for my name, Ryan McRae. I'm the first hit. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of ADHD Rewired. And if you're new to the show, welcome to ADHD Rewired. We are more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. You can see a full outline of this and all other episodes with all the links and other resources mentioned during this interview at ADHDrewired.com. Help support this podcast by checking out my sponsors. I use Zoom video conferencing nearly every day and so can you. Go free or go pro, but please go to erictibbers.com slash Zoom so they know that I sent you. And you can get a free audiobook from Audible at erictibbers.com slash Audible. And next time you shop Amazon, use the Amazon search portal at ADHDrewired.com. A small percentage of your purchase will go to support this show. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. You can also support this podcast by leaving an honest rating and review in iTunes or Stitcher. This really helps other people find this show. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Don't just be a passive listener, be an active member of the ADHD Rewired community. We are on Facebook. You can like our page, but please submit your request to join our free and growing community. And don't forget to check your other inbox because I screen everybody before they come into our community. Looking for a coach? If you're still listening at this point and you answered yes, come to my website at ADHDrewire.com and schedule your free 20-minute consultation or call me at 224-993-9450. Is your school, business, or organization hiring speakers? I provide fun and engaging presentations full of practical solutions that both educate and entertain. Hire me for your next professional development day or corporate training event. Go to ADHDrewired.com slash talks.
Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.